Welcome to S is for Shared Goals on the Political Trenches Local Government at Work. Our guest today is Rudy Friesen, Executive Director of the Red Deer River Municipal Users Group, the driving force behind a collective effort that brings together rural and urban municipalities within the Red Deer River Basin. Now, with what makes this group tick? The Red Deer River Municipal Users Group is not your ordinary association. It is a dynamic coalition of municipalities, a nexus of elected officials who have come together to address the pressing issues facing their communities. But it's more than just a meeting of minds. It's a commitment to shared goals, a dedication to long-term sustainability. The Red Deer Municipal Users Group stands as a testament to the power of collaboration, showcasing how by focusing solely on municipalities and representing a local elected officials, they can cut through the noise and concentrate on what truly matters, the well-being of their communities. Now, the mandate of the organization takes a forward-looking stance. Ensure the reliable quality water supplies are available for a sustainable and growing economy in each of the members' municipalities. So it's not just about today, it's about laying the groundwork for the prosperity of the future generations. So with that, Rudy, welcome to the Political Trenches. Oh, thanks very much. It's a pleasure to be here, Chris. I uh, will value the opportunity. I do want to just take a moment and say, Rudy, you did want to do a quick little preamble just to make sure that you acknowledge the people that you are representing, but also in your day to day work as well. Absolutely. Uh, just to, to clarify, uh, because there may be some that uh, that know me as the CAO of the, for the town of Bowdoin. That is correct. I am full time the chief administrative officer for the town of Bowdoin. Um, I've had the opportunity for the last two years uh, to serve in this administrative role with the Red Deer River Municipal Users Group. So um, uh, I, I sometimes refer to it as a side of my desk project. Um, you know, it takes up a few hours a, a week for me. Uh, but uh, it's been a fantastic organization to be a part of, and and the the collective work that we do, and the uh, and the common goal of the the member municipalities, of which there's approximately I think 34, uh, is really an inspiring piece of work. And and uh, although it is a, a not a full time workload, it's a full time passion for me to talk about water and all things water, and and I guess that's why we're here today. So. In my introduction, I gave a, the sort of the mandate of the group, a little bit background on the group. But before we get into the meat and potatoes of the interview, in your own words, can you explain what the Red Deer River Municipal User Group is? So um, I, I think in order to explain what it is, I'll, I'll maybe start with a, just a, a brief comment about where it started. Um, and so uh, there was a lot of significant development and a lot of significant talk about development in the mid 2000s in the province of Alberta. Um, there was a lot of expectation that there was going to be dynamic and unprecedented growth uh, throughout the province. And many municipalities were aligning themselves and preparing for that type of growth. And somewhere along the line, uh, when you talk about growth, uh, whether it's in uh, uh, municipal population, uh, rural economic development, agriculture, uh, manufacturing, anything like that, the conversation kept coming back to water. Where do we get the water from? And uh, it was about that same time that the water licensing provisions for the southern por portion of the South Saskatchewan River Basin, the Bow, the Old Man, um, uh, those watersheds, were licensed out and quickly eyes were turning northward to the northernmost uh, basin in the South Saskatchewan River Basin, that being the Red Deer. And so a group of like-minded municipalities aligned themselves to say that uh, as a group of municipalities, we need to advocate for the health of the river basin, not just for today, but for future growth and development and how this licensing is gonna play itself out in the province, how growth is going to be uh, prescribed and, and what kind of changes are gonna happen. And, and this group of municipalities said that throughout this, we wanna be able to advocate, as you said, not just for today, but the long-term sustainability and health of the watershed. So that's how we came together. Uh, so that's been you know almost 20 years now and uh, uh, we can we continue to pursue that advocacy and and to support projects uh, that support our mandate. If I may jump in, is there uh, any authority on the group, or is it just a group of uh, municipalities that decided to get together based on a common interest? 
So it's it's the latter. Uh, we've gotten together based on a common interest, um, um, and we've uh, uh, been the unofficial advocates, I guess, for the Red Deer watershed. Um, you know, we have a linear voice uh, in one respect because we're all municipalities. You have to be a municipality that draws water in some way, shape, or form from the Red Deer River to be a member. Um, uh, but in other respects, we're quite a dynamic voice because we represent everything from Clearwater County to the special areas and the MD of Acadia out at the Saskatchewan border. So, um, uh, so yeah, it's it's uh, uh, it's a voice that's uh, uh, gotten some key uh, uh, important ears, but an unofficial voice nonetheless. So you were t you said there were somewhere around thirty eight members, yeah. a lot. And amongst those members, when I was looking through the list, you've got cities, you've got municipal districts, you've got towns, you've got villages and special areas as well. I can't imagine that they all have the same perspective on things. Uh, how do you actually manage that? Is there a hierarchy of members or do they have conflicting opinions and desires? So um, for the most part, uh, while at first glance, you'd say that there would be that diversity of thought. Uh, it's quite like-minded uh, uh, in its broader goal and its higher level uh, conversations. Uh, we do at times when we get into specific conversations about specific projects that we want to advocate for, uh, we will require that uh, that uh, members will go back to their municipal councils and discuss this to say, how does this affect us on an individual local basis? But for the most part, the consensus building is very seamless. Uh, uh, there's a common thread about water and, and and there's an understanding that whatever you use it for, we all want it to make sure it's there. Okay. So today's uh, municipal alphabet is S is for shared services, sorry, for shared goals, and it might as well be shared services as well. Yeah. Is there a shared vision of success for uh, the user group? And if you if there is, how do you just, just how did you arrive at it? So there, there's absolutely a shared vision for the uh, utilization and the future prosperity of the watershed. Um, and and it's, it's one that was arrived at, uh, starting first of all, with some rules and leg legislation that are already in place. Um, uh, first in time, first in right is a phrase that's often used with water licensing throughout the watershed. Um, on a less formal basis, uh, you know, if there's ever shortages, uh, you know, you talk about uh, residents first, people first, uh, uh, before all others. Uh, so there's those common uh, commonalities that that uh, link us together uh, through previously decided legislation. But as we move forward, uh, we're able to find a lot of common ground, um, probably in in so far as that everything that we really talk about, from whether it's from Clearwater County or, or whether it's all the way to the Saskatchewan border. Uh, we're talking about rural economic development and how do we best define that? And each member defines it a little bit differently, but we can all agree that we're talking about rural economic development. We're talking about pr prosperity throughout the watershed uh, and and the health of the uh, of the watershed itself. So that's where the common ground really lies for us. Thanks. I just want to jump in here for a second because I want to talk about the membership for a second. Um, you expand a very vast uh, portion of Alberta from the Saskatchewan border, almost to the British Columbia border. Yeah. Um, shared goals are great. Shared visions are great, but the issues affecting Starland County special areas board, which saw a massive drought this year, which probably had to take from the uh, basin a lot more say than Red Deer or even Clearwater County. Yeah. How do you balance the shared goals with the understanding that every unique community along the basin, along the Red Deer River, has their own unique challenges? Because I think that's the big crux of having a shared goal and having shared understanding is two different things. Yeah, it, you're absolutely right. And and it it provides a dynamic to the conversation. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you don't say, Rudy. <laughs> how's that for a politically direct way of saying it? Um, but, uh, but it also uh, comes with a lot of attached realities. Uh, some of those realities are, um, for in fact, uh, apportionment is the reality for us. We are legally bound as a province to release 50% of our river waters to Saskatchewan. Okay, we, we know that's going to happen. 
Uh, within that, uh, we know that to, uh, in order to provide uh, the city of Red Deer with the water that they need for their growth and prosperity, they need to have a minimum of 16 cubic meters per second flowing past the city of Red Deer every day, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Those are those are givens. Now, within that, you're absolutely right. Everybody has a little bit different dynamic and everybody has a different um, uh, current issue that they're dealing with. With special areas, it's absolutely right now about drought. And our group from the Clearwater County all the way down to special areas uh, and the MD of Acadia are extremely supportive of the work that's being done on that Eastern Irrigation Project right now, because we know that it's going to be a dynamic impact for that region, but also ultimately for the province and, and a benefit to all the users on the watershed. Um, we also know that there's some realities in terms of that flow of water. And uh, one of our members has often said that, you know, we can talk about this all we want, but unless you're storing water and managing it, you're just a spectator. We can talk about it all we want. And as long as we talk about it, the water continues to flow past us and off into the province of Saskatchewan and through to uh, Hudson Bay. So that becomes a big part of our commonality too, is that um, it, it's one river flowing at the speed that it chooses and we have to manage it to the best of our abilities, knowing that we want to keep it around for all the time. You, you, you've talked about the economic development runoff of the river, and I, I use runoff in the loose terms here just to <laughs> keep it with the river theme here. But the your organization also looks at the sustainability of the river, but also the economic impact of the river as well, because more and more communities are growing along river uh, watersheds, and you're seeing more communities like the ones along the Red Deer River Basin growing in a in, in kind of an exploding fashion. Red Deer's exploding, a boat in Clearwater County, you're seeing a lot more houses development. The long-term prosperity of the river depends on the long-term prosperity of the municipalities. So how do you, as RDR mug, and I'm using your uh, analogy here, how do you look at the economic viability of communities while understanding that the river and the environment, uh, the way that they are right now, could be changing 10 years from now, five years from now, and the long-term feasibility may not be there along the riverbed five years from now? Uh, and and those are definitely part of the conversation, and I, and I think that that relates back to the comment about un, un, unless you're uh, managing it in a specific way, you're just a spectator. So it, it flows as it flows. Uh, we've got certain ability to manage the Red Deer River uh, by way of um, Dixon Dam and and Glenifer Reservoir. Uh, so you'll you'll see that it rises and falls throughout the course of the year to maintain those flows downstream. Um, we are, uh, but to your point, the Red Deer River is the least managed river in the system. Um, uh, the old man, uh, the bow, uh, the elbow, uh, they, they have a lot more management systems in place to allow for these sorts of things. And it's, it's, a, it's an absolute part of the conversation. Um, uh, and, and actually, uh, it's been a focal part of our conversation uh, uh, in terms of a project that we're related to that we've been supporting for the last year. Um, but you're absolutely right. The conversation now is that um, uh, you've got uh, a year where we had a, a fairly significant drought year. Uh, the expectation is that we're going into another drought year and um, uh, pretty soon we won't be a spectator because there won't be any water going by. Uh, not that drastic, but that has an impact and it's less manageable on the Red Deer River currently than it is on the other rivers that are in the system. I'd like to uh, get back, if I can, to some of the structural pieces around this too. And you were set up as a voluntary organization that sounds like that partners could come together if they wanted to, but didn't necessarily have to. What do you see as either the advantages or maybe the disadvantages of sharing this service, these types of service, this type of a service, uh, this type of user group, the goals that you've got, the vision that you share? What are, what's good, the good and the bad about it? So, so the good and the good and the bad. Uh, the the easy answer on the good side is the collective voice, and so um, when you've got such a diversity of membership uh, speaking with a common goal. Um, uh, People, people take notice and 
And so uh, when we talk about uh, the role of each member and, and the benefit that they get from membership, uh, there's no question that when we talk to the city of Red, Red Deer, I mean, they're, they're the big ones on the block and it's important for us to have them participate in and support the goals and objectives of the, of the uh, user group. Um, but they also recognize that, um, you know, when you take a longer vision and a, and a broader vision of the watershed, uh, what's good for everybody is also good for them. Uh, so that there's that collective that really works uh, uh, in our favor. Um, I, I think probably the, the negative of it, um, as we get more and more involved in different projects, I would say is something that I referred to a little bit earlier. While we see that we're a very diverse group because geographically we're a diverse group, uh, there, is, there is the risk that there's a perception that we're a very linear group because it's just all municipalities, right? Okay. So, you know, from the outside looking in, it's like, well, that's really one voice when we feel like it's a whole bunch of voices singing in unison. Hmm. Are you aware of other user groups like this on other watersheds or airsheds or any sheds? Um, not, not directly uh, familiar, but, uh, you know, there is a, there are... Um, uh, water alliances in the province uh, that support a lot of the same goals that we do. Uh, we work fairly closely with the Red Deer River Watershed Alliance. Um, I spoke to the linear nature of our group. Watershed Alliance is much more diverse. Um, they get provincial support. Uh, they're a diverse organization. They include municipalities. They include industry. They include environmental scientists. They include individuals. If you want to be an individual member of the Watershed Alliance, you can be. So they're a little bit more diverse uh, voice, but they're similar in some ways to us. Um, uh, maybe a little bit more focusing on the quality side of the water uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, at, at times. But there are groups that are similar to, to us. But I don't know that there's a group on any watershed uh, in the province that's made up solely of municipalities as we are uh, on the Red Deer. Thanks, Thanks. I want to I want to turn to the impact because when we talk about water, we are talking about not just uh, municipalities, but we're talking about provincial jurisdictions and even federal jurisdictions. Now you've talked about the common voice that the RDR mug has. You talk about the common voice that when you approach the provincial government, it's stronger to be 38 or stronger to be one than 38 individual members. Yeah. How hard is it to navigate? When you have 38 individual members trying to talk to the province on their issues with the understanding that the issues that are going to affect Starland, they may have more environmental impacts along the basin than, say, the town of Bowdoin. So when you're looking at the environmental regulations around a basin, a watershed like the Red Deer River, how important is it for your organization to have a cohesive sort of understanding on what each member is doing so that way you don't look like you're only speaking for one municipality, but you're speaking for all municipalities? Yeah, um, and and that's that's a big part uh, of our organizational structure. It's a big part of our meeting mandate, and it's a big part about what what carries us forward. Um, uh, we will um, sometimes it's issue driven, uh, sometimes it's policy driven, uh, sometimes it's just an idea that percolates within the organization. However, it comes to the table. Um, there's a consensus building process that we naturally go through, and we try to find those items that are specifically uh, ones that everybody can agree on. Um, if there's a specific issue that, um, uh, uh, let, let's say, um, let's look at it this way. Let's look at one of our members, uh, the town of Drumheller. They have some specific water management issues that they're dealing with with the province uh, uh, and they're working on berming and flood mitigation and those types of things. Um, and, and they're working on that as an individual municipality because that impacts them uh, directly as a municipality. So that doesn't get in the way of the collective work that we do about water management and, and um, uh, meeting criteria and all of the regulations that we need to be to meet, um, we're able to manage those things as mutually exclusive uh, in a lot of ways. So we stay within the ones uh, um, that are that are that we can have consensus on. Uh, that said, uh, it, it's a really interesting point to be, bring up because we could be faced with it. We could be faced with, if I'll use the same example again, 
uh, let's say the town of Drumheller is having trouble getting financing for uh, this berm work that they want to do for flood mitigation, and they ask us uh, to to help to lobby on their behalf. Um, well, that's a conversation the group has, and 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 would have to say, is that in the best interest of the watershed, right? So um, we haven't been we haven't been faced with that in in my short two years there, um, but uh, I've seen the group at work, and and they'll they'll find a consensus somewhere. It's a pretty dynamic group. How important is it to keep up on federal and provincial regulations around these environmental impact assessments? Because we're seeing bills that are being presented in front of the federal government that impact natural resources, and there's a big uh, sort of push right now to protect our water. Uh, do you see that impacting locally here in uh, Alberta, particularly at the Red Deer River? Uh, yeah, it's... Um, uh, in in some in some aspects of it, um, you know, it, it's not a fast moving. It's moving at the speed of government. Can I put it? Can <laughs> I put it that way? Um, uh, but in other respects, it can have huge impacts. And and you know, beyond our advocacy role, um, you know, there's there's that awareness piece too. Um, just to give you one of the examples, and and. Uh, you know, I, I've learned a lot about this uh, just in the last two years since I've uh, been with the uh, user group. Uh, although some of it I, I knew peripherally, I, I think we all know peripherally that we have this agreement that we're sharing 50% of the water with uh, Saskatchewan and beyond. I think everybody kind of more or less uh, gets the gist of that. Um, uh, one thing that can change in terms of regulations is, is that um, on average, throughout the course of the year, 50% of the water works out to be about 42 cubic meters per second, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. But the rivers don't flow like that. Mm -hmm. They they flow in different speeds, right? Um, but in terms of water predictability, uh, what if Saskatchewan asks that we be more specific about that apportionment, that it has to be 42 cubic meters per second every single day at minimum. That completely changes the way we manage the watersheds in Alberta. So we have to keep abreast of those situations and, and have those conversations and advocate what's best for the users upstream. Hmm. How do you uh, how do you deal with next year and the year beyond and the year beyond? Do you have any sort of strategy in place or annual priorities that you look at as a group? Uh, we we do, um, um, and and I'll start by saying uh, our organization, just like every other organization, was impacted by the COVID <laughs> COVID curveball, uh, and and it uh, with that slowdown, it took us a little bit of a ramp up. Um, we've, we've got a long-term strategic plan in terms of some key elements that we try to focus on moving forward uh, that are important, we believe, uh, to the long-term viability of the watershed. And I'll, I'll give you a, a couple of uh, key examples. Uh, in 2023, um, we've been working uh, closely and, and financially supporting uh, the work of Water Smart Canada to reevaluate and update uh, and bring, in, uh, bring into force a brand new South Saskatchewan River operating model that uh, allows you to take different impacts on the South Saskatchewan River watershed, like drought and flood and snowpack and glacial melt and rainfall, and plug them into this model and see how it impacts the entire watershed and individual sub-basins like the Red Deer in that. So that's that's work that we're investing in today and, and, and supporting today that will have long-term impacts on how we how we create what we can for predictability in the river system. Uh, one of the things that we're, we're also uh, discussing uh, in our long-term plans is, uh, and I said with reference to the Red Deer watershed, uh, you know, we've got one facility on the watershed, uh, Glenifer Reservoir and Dixon Dam. So, you know, we're having conversations about what it would look like and where it would be and, and what would have to happen for there to be an, another additional storage facility on the Red Deer River. That's a 25 year conversation. So uh, so we're definitely uh, looking to the future and, and looking to protect the watershed and the, the communities that are on it. So there's it's definitely a long-term vision of the group. Thanks. The last question for me before I turn it back to Chris is about what's going on elsewhere. and. You said you are unique in terms of watersheds in Alberta. 
Have you been getting any interest expressed by people, municipalities that operate or live along other uh, major rivers to do something similar to what you're up to? I know, and and uh, uh, you know, I I get the concept that you know if you see a working model, you know maybe you can apply it to other jurisdictions. Right. Um, uh, we've we've not had those inquiries uh, uh, to date, at least not to my knowledge. But uh, uh, that would be a, a conversation that we'd like to have. And and I know that um, you know I, I mentioned the uh, Red Deer Watershed Alliance. There's similar organizations to that throughout Alberta. I think there's right. four or five different organizations. So, you know, we'd be happy to see more like like ours. I I um, uh, I I don't know how how it was that we got so much traction when we did in 2006, uh, but I will tell you that our membership has remained fairly solid. So, uh, you know, there's value for the municipalities in it. So, maybe there is value for other watersheds. Uh, They're welcome to call. <laughs> Thanks. And if you want to call and if you want to learn more about the Red Deer River Municipal Users Group, the link to their website will be in the show notes. So you can find uh, Rudy's email address, information, membership, all of the membership of the X a number amount of municipal users. But before I do let you go, I do have one question because I it popped in my head about like 10 minutes ago and I forgot about it. Now I've just remembered it. And it's about the Saskatchewan side. And this is something that I've been talking, just rolling over my head over the last few weeks. Your your municipal users group, have you invited Saskatchewan municipal users to come into the Red Deer River municipal users group to sort of not just advocate on the Alberta side, but also advocate on the Saskatchewan side of the border as well? Uh, we haven't, but I uh, just found a new component to the business plan for 2024. Um, you know, we, we've we've not thought about it because, uh, in one respect, because we know what's getting a portion to Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan knows what they're getting, um, uh, and so uh, you know that 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 political line is drawn, and it, it's drawn in your thoughts as well. But there may be value. Uh, Saskatchewan is trying to go grow its uh, uh, agriculture and processing uh, sector through the use of water and, and the greater use of water. And maybe there is a partnership there. That's, that's a definite possibility. Well, it's all, it's always something political on the political trenches, local government at work. But Rudy, <laughs> I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedules to sit down with us and just even scratch the surface because in this half hour conversation, I feel like we didn't really get to all the things we wanted to get to, but I appreciate you taking a half hour, hour out of your day to talk about the Red Deer River Municipal Users Group or RDR Mug. Pleasure to do so. Looking forward to more time in the future. Thanks, Rudy.